Welcome to the Armani Talks YouTube channel, the number one YouTube channel for you to level up your communication skills. Learn the art of public speaking, social skills, and personal branding to take your message to the world. For today's episode, we're going to be entering the world of social skills, and I'm going to be talking about the very dark and twisted parts of social skills. So in this world, there are plenty of different characters. They're the good characters. They're the great characters. And unfortunately, there are the evil characters. The most prominent evil character out there is a snake. We all know the snake, the backstabber, the betrayer, the person who acts like they're your friend, but they aren't. I often get the question, Yo Armani, are haters and snakes the same thing or are they different? If you were to ask me, from far, they look look very similar, they seem very similar, but when you look closer, they are different. The difference in summary, let me just put it like this, a hater doesn't like you and they'll let you know. A snake doesn't like you, but they won't let you know. That's the difference. In a weird sort of way, you start to respect the hater as you start maturing. You respect them because you realize they don't like you, but at least they're vocal with it. At least they're honest. You respect the honesty. You appreciate it because now you understand, look, I want you out of my life. You know exactly who to remove. With a snake though, they don't have the balls to say what they feel about you. They just don't. They're cowards and they have poor character. So what they do is they go around all these weird loopholes, trying to be your friend, trying to get you to like them, trying to get you to like make all these inside jokes and all this kind of stuff, all for what? So they can backstab you. It hurts, but it's true. Now, here's a question that we all wonder. Is there any way that we can stop getting backstabbed? Is there any formula to avoid snakes? Unfortunately, no. There's no formula because snakes are just a part of life. They are just a part of it, especially the social skills world. And in many cases, snakes have supreme social intelligence. They know how to cover their tracks very well. So if you have social intelligence and a lot of it, and you see a person that's being very charming, a person that knows how to get on your good side, you as a person with high social intelligence, you may not see anything wrong with them. Even though they have poor character, they know how to cover it up. So your measuring stick shouldn't be, how do I completely avoid snakes? Because if that's the goal that you're setting, I guarantee you, you're going to be disappointed time and time again. The goal that you should be setting instead is to be able to spot red flags. Be able to spot when something isn't right. And then evaluate the situation, make an analysis from it, and then distance yourself if need be. So the goal isn't to avoid snakes completely, but the goal is to spot red flags. For you to be able to spot red flags, you have to understand the different kinds of snakes that there are. In the real world, I mean, in the jungle, there are lots of snakes, right? There are pythons, there are rattlesnakes, black mambas, and so much more. Same with the social skills world. There's one kind of snake that everyone knows about, the one with the labels. You often hear other people saying, yo, this person right here, uh, Paul, Paul is a snake. Do not trust Paul. And often when you're talking to Paul, you get that snake-like vibe from them. They're always talking shit about other people. And understand this, the way that they talk about other people is the same way they talk about you when you're not around. This person is always finger pointing. They just give off the snake vibe. Very easy to spot this group. The second group is the group that is the sneaky snake. You'll never be able to tell they're a snake because they're so charming. They have good people skills. They have high levels of social intelligence, but very poor character. So this snake is very hard to spot. The third snake, the third snake is the one that hurts your feelings the most. I call them the transformative snake. We all know a transformative snake in our lives. This is the person who started off as a friend, a person who we trusted a lot. We built a lot of rapport with them and in certain cases, 
We consider them family. But somewhere along those lines, somewhere in those lines in that relationship, something went wrong. Something went wrong and they turned their back on you. They backstabbed you. And this right here really blindsided you and hurt your feelings. The third snake really, really hurts you as a person because in certain ways you start thinking, hmm, if a person like this could backstab me, why should I trust again? Why should I? What if other people backstab me as well? And this is a completely normal concern to have, completely normal, and you shouldn't beat yourself up about this. However, you have to learn a life lesson. And that life lesson is that loyalty is scarce and snakes are abundant. The more you get out there in the real world, the more you'll realize that there are a lot of snakes out there. And the reason there are a lot of snakes is because not everyone has the same interest that you have. So snakes are very relative. They're very subjective. In your world, someone may, may be a snake. But in that person's world, they're the hero. I remember I had a situation a few months back where I thought of this brilliant topic for a blog article. I went through Google and I saw that no one talked about this topic. And I remember I was telling a friend about it and I was saying, yo, like this is a brilliant topic that I'm going to talk about. Now this friend of mine was like, hmm, I feel like I'm more qualified to talk about this because I deal with this topic a lot. But I'll let you talk about it. I'll let you talk about it. I thought that was a very weird comment to make, but I was like, okay, let me not make a big deal out of it. The next week, I checked this dude's website and this dude has the same exact topic as a blog article. He basically stole my idea. And when I asked him about it, he said, Armani, I just thought about it and I realized that I was much more well suited to talk about this topic. So yeah, I stole the idea, but it was necessary. So in this situation, in my world, this dude's a snake. In his world, he's a hero. He did the right thing. He stood up for something. So when you start realizing this, you start realizing that snakes aren't just this character, but it's more of something from a spectrum and the person that's evaluating it. And typically when you're evaluating other people, just realize that they have their best interests in mind. That's it. That's all you have to understand. And when you start understanding this, you aren't always personalizing getting backstabbed. You understand that they did what they did that they thought was best for their life. It's just like that. Ultimately though, realize this. You gotta trust slow and cut fast. Trust slow and cut fast. Often, we just hand out our trust, we trust everyone, we give it away like candy, and then when someone does us wrong, we blame them. While in reality, we should be blaming ourselves. From here on out, the main takeaway that you want to get is that your trust is something that people should be working towards. Not with just talking, anyone can talk, but through actions. Because not everyone can take action. Not everyone has these certain behaviors to prove that they're loyal, to prove that they're trustworthy. So start measuring the trust that you give someone based off of the action that they're consistently putting in and do the same back for them. And that's how you start building a harmonic relationship with one another. This is a person that you can consider a friend. And this is a person, even if they do backstab you, even if they do turn into a transformative snake, you realize that you did all the necessary precautions that were meant to be taken. You did it all, homie. So don't beat yourself up over it. Ultimately though, as you start maturing, you start collecting a database of all of your past social interactions. This is why it's very, very important to reflect back on your experiences. So in the future, your intuition starts kicking in. When you are being involved in a new interaction where something doesn't seem right, the intuition kicks in and says, hey, remember this one time something like this happened? Be alert, be alert. And Intuition always manifests in your body. So you'll feel weird sensations. In those instances, pay attention to those feelings. Those feelings are very, very crucial to the next action steps that you need to be taking. That's it. Go through a lot of interactions, reflect on them time and time again. Ultimately, homie, 
You're never gonna completely avoid snakes and don't try to. Just pick up on the red flags time and time again. You're gonna pick up on the red flags by being able to classify the different snakes, making sure you reflect and ultimately learning from the experiences. Betrayal will teach you more about life than a self-help book ever can. It'll build your thick skin, it'll toughen you up, and it'll give you a crash course on human nature. So learn from this moment, make the most of it, and I guarantee you, your future self will thank you. If you enjoyed today's episode about snakes and how to navigate around the social skills world, make sure you drop a like for me and you share this video so other people can get, avoid getting backstabbed. Thank you, my friend, for joining the Armani Talks YouTube channel, and I'll catch you next time.